Hey everyone! Hi! <laughs> Sorry to be a minute late. Um, I am, we had to run out to the bathroom uh, for the dogs there. Uh, and whoo! And so I had to run because they had to, you know, make an emergency pit stop there. But uh, um, let's see. It's pineapple time. I'm just going to run into it. It's pineapple time. Yay. Hi, good morning, Shelly. We're going to, uh, I have to <laughs> tell you a little funny story about how this came out. So I don't know if you guys see or have seen this on TikTok. My sister did it. Um, so there's a this hack. That's what they call it. A hack on um, how to cleanly eat I guess it's cleanly or a new way to cut open a pineapple right and um what you have to do is you twist off the top and then you uh, pound it on like pound from the bottom on like your counter and then you have to roll it like a rolling pin really really hard and then you can pull out the pieces of pineapple supposedly so my sister came over yesterday we're going for our walk and um I said oh hey have you seen that pineapple hack and she's like what no and um I proceeded to try to show her how to do it and I just made a big old mess I just made a big old mess, uh, but it was funny and that it sort of gave me my uh, idea for doing this project. I guess I always equate pineapples with summertime. I think a lot of people do, um, it, especially like, you know, like Hawaiian summer. I think pineapples don't really ripen in the summer. I think they ripen in the early part of the year. Um, but whatever, I think pineapples are fascinating, uh, and just so much fun to eat and to, and to talk about and stuff. So I put together these three, um, these three cards that I found that feature pineapples and they're all from design space. They are, there's one that's like, it's called, it's just a general pop-up. Look at that. Isn't that cute? I think this one might be Anna Griffin, but I might be wrong. And it features a pineapple. This is an orange. I think it would choose a different color here. But look, watermelon and a strawberry, one of my favorites. And it's just a very simple pop-up. I've been contemplating embellishing it a little bit more. This one is just a plain old square card that I like because, you know, the drinking made a drink out of the pineapple. Um, and I cut this out, sweet summertime, because I thought it would make a cute little card to send to somebody. Yeah, Williamsburg. I, I'd like to find out the origin of that. And then this one, which is really just adorable. Hi, Daryl. Missed you. And this one's adorable. See how it folds like this? It says Aloha on there. And I actually cut it out from a, like a shimmery paper. And it's just really cute. It, it's very like uh, textury because of these little cutouts, which I think is kind of awesome. And um, so I'm going to show you how to put these together today and also going to spend a little time talking about this uh how do you take I, I wanted some sort of a saying for the inside of my card and actually here over on this card aloha I was thinking well you know maybe I can substitute something like this but it came inside I don't know how else to explain it. The image came inside of a pineapple. So that's how I found it. And I just simply typed in pineapple. And uh, you'll see what I mean that it came inside. It was like inscribed and cut out from an image of a pineapple. And I want to show you how to... Um, sort of reverse that. So see this one, it said sun, sand, and a pineapple in my hand. Um, that's similar to what I'm talking about. And here is the one, sweet summertime. 
let me change this so you can see sweet summertime right here so I'm gonna pull that in and we're gonna talk about that um, and I'm going to be using the maker 3 to cut using I'm actually going to be using some leftover smart vinyl that I had from another cut that I did I think it was maybe the butterfly thing and I had just been cutting off all the little pieces and I want to show you how it cuts um, but it has to be cut on the mat so I just thought um right who lives in a pineapple under the sea there's actually I, I think I think there's a there's a SpongeBob SquarePants cartridge. Are they was there? Hmm. It's under image sets. I think you have to. I think I want to check. I know there's like Hello Kitty. Yeah, there is a SpongeBob SquarePants. You do have to purchase it. Um, because I purchased it, I don't know. Um, I don't know. How much it is but if you are a fan of spongebob squarepants you can uh purchase that image set it's a nickelodeon image set so it's licensed you will get a discount if you're an access member but i'm not here to promote uh to promote spongebob or buying image sets i just wanted to you know mention that although i do like all those like squidward and all of that stuff i like those guys so anyway so these cards are easily um found and they're pretty easy to put together so um i found them just simply by searching for the word pineapple um and that's where i also found this one here so this one's the pop-up this one's just the basic square card we're going to embellish it with the sweet summertime on the inside of that card and then i thought you know this here we could put bring down and put sort of um, here, maybe like turn it a little bit, like when we go, or maybe even remove that little squiggly thing, I don't know, or move the squiggly thing or whatever. Um, I kind of like to have, to have uh, sentiments on my card, so I like to sort of just find images and, and uh, you just use the sentiments from them too. So let me show you how I, I got the sentiment out of the pineapple. <laughs> I'm going to make the pineapple bigger. Let me um, just group these and hide them. I'm going to show you where I found them in a second. So, oops, it's already grouped. And this one here, let's group it. And wait, group. Okay. Anyway, um, you know, today's Thursday, by the way. I had to remind myself that. <laughs> so I had to remind myself it's Thursday. So tomorrow's Friday. Um, and don't mean to be jumping all over the place, but like my brain does this to me, especially at the beginning of a new month and with a Monday holiday. So I just have to remind myself. So tomorrow is 3D Friday, and we will be having date night on Saturday night at 7. Um, I think I'm going to do some infusible ink on Saturday night. And, um, and tomorrow being 3D Friday, we're going to be working on some shadow box cards from uh, Lori Whitlock. She has, uh, she has a new, like a patriotic image set that's available or grouping or whatever is available, but I'm doing something else from her, from her called a shadow box card, shadow box, box card, shadow. Uh, anyway. All right. So um, let's just get on with it. So, um, so here is sweet summertime, which I really like, and I would like to turn it into, um, a sentiment, but it's sort of inside of this pineapple. And this is how I do it. I'm sure there are other ways that you can do this, but, um, this is how I do it. So here, maybe you do it differently. And if you do, let us know. But, um, so I duplicate it. Duplicate is right up here. See that? 
it has like a piece of paper with a star inside duplicate so i duplicate it and for this uh, for this illustration, I'm going to turn this one black just so you can see the contrast. So I have sweet summertime, sweet summertime, and I'm going to contour the black one. And all I'm going to do is choose hide all contours. Now it hides all but one of the contours and that one is generally the outside, which is good. And then we get this. So we get like basically the same thing only um, without the saying. Then we align them up and you can use, if you want, you can use the align um, center if you want to do that to line them up. And once you have them lined up, you're going to slice them down here. Slice. One of my favorite, slice and contour are my favorite. And so then what you'll see is you start to peel it apart and you get your saying, this is the original. Now to, sorry, there's some, they're working outside my house this morning for some reason. I don't know, like the phone lines or something. So um, when you think about slice, think about when you make a uh, cookie cutouts and you're taking a cookie cutter and you're pressing it through the dough and then what ends up happening is you take the cutter off and you end up with the the surrounding dough your cutout and then your cutter right so here is what that is this is uh was our like dough this is what our cutter cut out and this is what was left does that make sense? Or this was our cutter. Does that make sense? So once you have that, you can then uh, change the size of it or like so that it fits and you can delete the other parts. So for instance, if I want this to fit on this card, I think I would just like unlock it and sort of make it kind of bigger and uh, put it like this. Kind of cool. Um, and let me just ungroup this, maybe take this off and put here or here. I don't know. I just think it's kind of cute. Um, or on our pineapple, like drink card, wherever that may be. Here we go. Where is it? Pineapple drink card. Um, here, is this here? No, that's an envelope. Um, I don't, what happened? Oh, is it here? Yeah, there it is. Okay, so um, here's our pineapple drink card. Come on, move over. So group this. And I have my sweet summer time here. And I put it here just to group it. But when I put it together, I'm going to uh, cut it out and put it on the inside. And um, so there is is that. You don't have to do this. And you also do not have to use vinyl. You can cut these things out in paper. I just think it's it comes out better in vinyl and um, and I use vinyl a lot and I need to use it even more for my cards because I have so much vinyl sort of just hanging around, tons and tons of vinyl. So um, I wanna continue to use it, you know, in different ways like this. So let's talk about cutting this. I'm going to be using the Maker 3, but Instead of using, um, not, not for the cards, what I'm going to do, I'll, uh, ungroup it, take this. I'm just going to cut out the sweet summertime, um, part, the, the sentiment, let's call it a sentiment. And, um, and we, I'm just going to hide all of these, uh, group it, hide it. I know I seem a little bit, a little bit off today. Sorry. <sighs> um, anyway, so we're going to cut this out and we're going to be using leftover smart vinyl. So here's leftover smart vinyl. You can tell that it's smart vinyl because on the back 
um, it says Smart Vinyl, Cricut Smart Vinyl, and it's permanent. The permanent is green, and the removable is black, I think. So this will not go into... Um, this will not go into the Joy or into the regular machine. It's just a small piece, but it will be perfect for our sentiment. So I'm going to put it onto a mat and cut it out, and I'll show you um, how that works out. So how you would do it. So I'm using the Maker, remember, and the, the big difference here is that we have a choice of cutting it with out the mat. Hi, Paralita, you made it, yay. Um, and so without the mat and then on the mat. So in this particular case, even though I'm using smart vinyl, I am going to cut this on the mat. And this is, this works. This is easy. Um, and so here we go. Here's, uh, here's my mat. It shows up as the mat. And let's see, I want to just double check. So six inches, maybe I can squeeze two in here. I have a small piece. I, I think I could, mm, I think I could do that. I think I could fit the, uh, yeah, I could do that. So I'm going to take a mat. Hi, Paralita, happy birthday. Wonderful. I'm gonna take a mat and then I'm going to hit continue. Now there is one thing that I wanted to mention. I'll mention it, well, I'll, I'll tell you now. I can't show it to you because I only have one mat. But in the case that you have two cuts. I don't want to say mat because sometimes they won't be on the mat. You will now be required if you're working with the Maker 3 to um, save the material setting in between mats. And that's something that has tripped me up a couple of times. So I just thought I'd mention it. So I'm going to do Smart Vinyl permanent. And so I'm all set with it on my mat. I'm going to show you by bringing it over here. And I also want to talk about speed a little bit because it seems to be a thing. Um, so here's uh, my, my uh, smart vinyl on a mat. And you will see that the Maker 3 pulls it all the way in. And that's just sort of part and parcel to the whole measuring and then you are able to hit go and it will go it will not cut as fast as a uh, smart vinyl that's inserted without the mat it will it will uh, cut fast but not as fast i mean actually when you cut smart vinyl it cuts really really fast so um there's you know there's that but it's still pretty fast so there it's almost done and i did change the project number to two I hope I can weed this correctly because I want to show you how easily it comes off um, from the backing, which is a, is a difference from the smart vinyl that was originally made for the Joy. Remember how I would struggle with removing that stuff from the backing? Well, <clears throat> I guess I wasn't the only one because um, they have reformulated it. So going forward, all of the smart vinyl will have a thinner backing and it will be easier to remove from the backing. So making it so much easier to transfer. Okay, I noticed that this piece of vinyl has my fingerprints all over it, but there it is cut out. Um, and bring you on down here. I am going to show you how to put together these three cards, but I figured let's do this first. Um, and it's a little bit hard to see. I think I'll cut it in half just in case my, um, my weeding isn't successful the first time. Okay. And I'm going to take... And start to remove. 
this from the backing. This is just the negative part. This is all the same as what we normally do with, um, with regular vinyl, removing regular vinyl. These uh, loopy things can be a little bit difficult because, you know, going up and down all of these letters can cause like a tiny little bit of the letter to sort of stick. So do take your time with the with these kinds of loopy things, okay? Because um, because you might get frustrated and l miss like a letter. If you, t if you go real, real fast. So here, like here, I'm having a little bit of trouble with the E. So I'm gonna hold it down here with my finger. And here we go. Yay, I did it. Um, and then I just need to go in and remove the inside of the loops, all the loops here, which I'm doing. There we go. And now the E's. Do you um, weed out the inside before or after you take the majority off? Like, do you, would, do you do this inside of the E before or after? I like to do it after, I don't know why. I don't think there's any benefit of doing it either way. All right, so here's some transfer tape. It's actually been used, so we I reuse my transfer tape as much as I can. And it stays pretty sticky. What? And then I'm just, this is burnishing. You guys know if you've been watching, that's what it is. And then have a look. <laughs> of course, it's not going to happen with me. Um, but normally, I tell you guys, turn it on this side and peel. And I was like doing a lot of this. Peel, peel, peel. I don't know if you guys remember that. But look, it's coming off with, with a few exceptions. But it's coming off pretty easy. <laughs> of course. The magic of live TV. But seriously, it is much easier um, to do than it was before. Before, I was doing it by the centimeter, and I was burnishing and burnishing so much, and I was still it was still driving me a little bit nutty. But um, now, not so much. There we go. But there we go. Okay. Hey, by the way, if you ever get to the point where you are, um, you're ready, like you have it on there, but I don't know, your pot is boiling over or the telephone rings, you can always just put it back on the backing. And in fact, when I was making uh, like car decals for people, I would actually do that just that because I don't want them to have to deal with, you know, the whole idea of of doing the transfer from the backing. So I would ship it like this with the backing on there, but they could then sort of slowly move it from, remove it from the transfer tape, from the backing to the transfer tape, and then they could put it on their card or their car, excuse me. So this one here, let's put it on the inside of this card. This card is super easy. So we'll start with that. It's This card was actually from a an image set and I will give you these files so you don't have to go hunt for them, but I will also show you where I got them. Um, so this was from a uh, image set a long time ago. And this was before they had all the fancy tools, even scoring. Okay, um, or they had a scoring stylus, but you notice this is you'll see this with a lot of the old images. This are just like cuts, but they're not all the way through cuts. So what I tend to do is I take my marker. You can use um, a sharpie or anything like that uh, to do this, and I just go over where those cuts are just to give it sort of special emphasis. Um, on the card. You don't have to do that, of course, uh, but I kind of like 
doing that. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, there we go. And this card, very similar to an insert card, it just has this piece that goes in the back there and then here's on the other side. So let's just glue it to the inside of the card. I'm trying to remember what image set this came from, but I know it's older because it's a very simple cut. Okay, so there is the back of the card. You see that? Put a little too much glue on there. And now I can take my sentiment that I did in my vinyl and I'm going to just place it in there. Don't push it all the way down. Keep a, like a little part up for you. And I actually don't push it down too terribly hard anyway. And then I'll just use my fingers if something sort of lifts up because I don't want the paper, like sometimes the top of the paper will sort of tear off and I don't want that to happen so I'm doing this rather gently not like you would do on another type of surface and there is our um, adorable very simple card just to send you know for whatever for whomever um, here I used a little bit smaller of a pen I think this was a Cricut pen but I did put that in there sweet summertime really cute and the simplest of the three cards that I'm going to show you today. Let's do this one next. It is a, it's technically a pop-up card. That's what it comes from a grouping called Simple Pop-Ups. And, uh, you know, I suppose it's a pop-up. I guess it's a pop-up. It's sort of, to me, it's like an interesting fold. So anyway, this consists of simply two pieces. This is the green back and the yellow uh, flesh. And it is put on, the yellow flesh part is put on in such a way that it creates like a mountain fold. And you do not actually glue this part into the card. So let's have a look at that one. Uh, if I did, did I cut it out? Oh man, I did not cut it out. Oh man, I'm so sorry. So very simple. Wow, Rita, I'm losing it. Okay, so very simple. When you get these two pieces cut out, you are gonna fold here and here and here, okay? And then when you fold your yellow piece, you're going to do a valley fold, then a mountain fold, and then a valley fold. That's what creates the peak on the yellow piece. And then on the green piece, all you're going to do is just fold it in half and you'll have a score line right there. Now to get this look of these little pieces that are sticking up, all you need to do is to, I hold it from the back and then I just use my fingers to sort of flick these pieces up. Now, if you're gonna put this in an envelope, it might get a little bit uh, pushed down, but that's okay because people will kind of get the effect. And it's also would make a cute little sort of stand up piece, if you ask me. So there is the card. See how that goes together? I'm sorry, I thought I cut it out. Ah, I'm losing it. Okay, so the third card is this really cute, also a pop-up simple card that has fruit watermelon, strawberry, an orange, and um, a pineapple. Clearly not in proportion, <laughs> but it's still adorable. And this pop-up has these little, um, these little tabs that are sort of cut out from here, and that's what gives it the pop-up, you see? Now, a thing about pop-ups is that most people who design pop-ups and even the ones in design space, they don't usually have something on the front. You can change that by making your own front 
if you wanted to. I clearly um, did not do that for this one, but I have done it in the past. And uh, so when you're buying SVGs or looking at SVGs, know that, um, that that's just sort of the card, the way that these cards are designed generally. So this is a pop-up. Let's show you all the little pieces, and that's what makes this. So this comes in... Uh, there's two pieces, again, kind of like the the pineapple, uh, the triple pineapple one. This is the base of the card, and it has a score here, and you're just going to score it just like that, right? And then this is the inside, the part that gives it the workings. And you'll see here, this is the way pop-ups work. So this is the halfway point right here to the left and right of the the featured item okay but then there's also right here a score line and then you'll see up here there are two tabs so I kind of always start with the two tabs and I just start by folding them like this because that's what they're going to do that's how the pop-up is going to work it seems to be easier that way then I do the middle like this, and I'm just doing the sides right here at the middle, okay? And then you'll notice that right here, it almost automatically just goes in. So that is your pop-up card. You see that? Like this, like this, and it's going to go in here. That's it. That's all a pop-up card is. So now we have to um, just put together our feature um, item in there and that consists of a really cute um, cutout that's a layered cutout so here it's two orange and again I think I might have chose a different one so we're going to do the two oranges and put that together then we're going to just start layering and putting pieces in so there is the background for the strawberry and the watermelon so then we'll put this on and then this on and then we'll do the um pineapple okay so um there are a few other little pieces and we'll do those too i'm using um my glue i haven't used glue in a little while so i'm pretty excited to get back to using it this is barely art precision craft glue actually has the ultra fine tip on it and i'm uh, just going to put a little tiny bit of glue around the edges. I'm not saturating those pieces with glue. Try to avoid that, okay? So we're putting this. Here we go. Now there is a little piece missing. And that is it. So I'm going to put some glue on it. And that will complete the slice. Just like that. Next up is the black piece. That is going to be behind the, um, behind the strawberry and the watermelon. So you can see the seeds. So this is a really cute card. And one where you'll get to use all of your solid card stock. So it's kind of fun. Okay. And the trick is you're supposed to line it up so you can't see, but I didn't do it correctly. And we're going to start with this watermelon piece. Again, I'm using very little glue, but I'm, I'm being careful to go around um, around the cutouts, I see a little thing. We can put the watermelon in. Now the um, strawberry, those holes are really tiny. And so oftentimes they don't like sort of poke out. So you can just use your little weeding tool to poke them out like this, like that. And here 
we go. This goes here. And let's see, what's next? Let's do the pineapple. I know we have some greenery to put in here, but here's the pineapple piece. There's, this is the backing, there is the cover on top. And when you're doing, when you're putting the green on, make sure it matches. Like if you, make sure you don't turn it over cause it might not match. So I like to, yeah, I did actually turn it over and it does match. So what does that tell you? That I turned it over originally? Maybe, anyway. Went with my sister yesterday and Owen uh, for another lovely walk over at Spring Pond where our butterfly way station is going to be. And um, I think when I talk to people about the butterfly way station, they're just like, huh? You know, they don't understand it. And they're like, how do the butterflies know to come to the station um, to relax and to lay their eggs and all of that stuff? And it's like, well, you'd have to be a butterfly to really understand it because it's kind of instinct. And if I were looking up in the uh, sky and I was a butterfly, um, then see if I were a butterfly then I would see that most of Peabody is covered in concrete or buildings and so you would see this lush little area and it is really a beautiful lush area that is not covered in concrete and you'll see all your milkweed which you love and you'll go there and you'll take a rest and you know lay your eggs and do all of that stuff so that's the idea and then we were talking about milkweed and and how it's like a preferred food to eat and uh so we talked about <laughs> milkweed I, my sister i don't know i don't know if she likes my stories but i do tell her a lot of stuff and she's my older sister um okay so there's the pineapple and then there is this is the greenery for the watermelon you see how it goes over there it's covering that orange um and then there's actually little pieces that go on the rind to give that sort of striped look but let's first do the strawberry so we need the greenery for the strawberry. Just kind of a cute, yay, it's summertime kind of card, which I like. All right, and then we've got these little tiny pieces, which I'm sure go in some sort of order, but um, I didn't keep note of it you'll do it <laughs> you'll do it better than me but uh there's like four pieces here and they go here like that or something sort of like that um to create that sort of striped look that a watermelon has And because we're going to be using the saying that we cut out, I'm not gonna use this piece, which is the, the sort of whirly thing. I'll use it for something else, you know? And all we simply have to do at this point is to attach it to our card and put the sentiment in, just like that, and then attach the two pieces together. So I am just putting glue onto this so that it won't pop off like this you just match it up mm -mm. here we go match it up so that you're not seeing that pink behind the part that's going to actually cause it to pop up the pink base okay and then we're going to turn this over and we're just gonna put a little bit of glue here 
Do not glue this part, but just put a little bit of glue here. I have a little bit of a, um, it's, it's a little bent accidentally, so I'm just gonna give it a little bit of glue there. And we take and fold the card, and we're going to just simply put the fold of this card in there and press down. You notice we didn't do the bottom yet. That's because um, we want this card to open and close, so I wanna make sure I do it, and it is going to be um, at the proper space. So we're going to just put a little bit of glue there after the fact. I like to do the back first, and then while it's folded up, I put the bottom there. And then we have our vinyl that we cut out. So let's go ahead and weed it yeah. here. So clearly you guys, um, you know, if, if you were going to use this smart vinyl, now whether uh, you use it from your joy and you're doing it on your regular machine or maybe you get this smart vinyl, um, and the new machine or whatever, um, if you happen to have it, it does cut just fine, um, on a mat. And so I guess that's what I was trying to show you today is that you can cut, um, the smart vinyl pieces that you have left over. So being a frugal person like me, you might have been looking at some of it and saying, yeah, but what do you do with all of the scraps? This is what you do with your scraps. So you don't have to give up your frugality. <laughs> and actually, maybe it'll be cheaper because um, you don't have to replace mats as often. Maybe that's the idea. Oops. Uh, I got a little problem here with my M's. Come on now, M's. Whoa, look what happened. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Duh. My M is on the back of this. Does this happen to you guys? Does this ever happen to you? Here's the loop. I'm just going to try to pull it and place it where it belongs. It might not come out perfect, but I don't want to recut it. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> what a mess. This might be one of those things where you have to do have to cut it out again, but I'll try. Oh, you guys. Some, there's an am. That's the. I think that's the second M. Some. Oi, oi, oi. And I don't feel so bad because it's just like a tiny leftover scrap piece. But uh, of course, I'm trying to figure out how it goes. Actually, have it. Do I have it on the wrong way? Uh. Well. Hmm. You'll do better, I guess. <laughs> so um, so you'll do better than me. Here's my M, sweet summertime. I could just like recut it. Do I have a piece big enough? I have, this is actually something else. This is permanent vinyl, but in the glossy, I could cut this out. And in fact, I still have on my screen the cutout piece. So let's just quickly get that in and cut it out. Now, one of the things that I've noticed with vinyl is I usually cut on the setting that they ask you to put it on, but I put on more. I usually have more. And that's because I want for this to um, really cut through. And that's the case with this. I didn't, it didn't really cut through. So when I was removing it, those letters were sticking it part at part. So let's go ahead and cut this. But we are still going to use, let's just use a smart vinyl permanent and see what happens. Oh, well, oh, well, oh, well, oh, well. <laughs> it's never a dull moment here, guys. 
Um, so, let's see. I'm trying to think what else is going on while we wait for that to cut out. I could write it. I could write it in with, with a pan, and I just didn't. So, but, you know, I'm so persistent that I, that I must um, do it. Like, even if I keep messing it up, I just never, ever, ever give up on anything. Um, even when it's, like, obvious to everyone else that it's not going to work. Mm, not for me. I always try to figure something out. Almost done. Yeah, it did. It, it goes pretty fast. This little thing, does this happen to you? This this was a uh, piece of paper that had like a barcode on the back. Must I must have purchased it singularly and I didn't take that off. I've had that problem too here. See, this is the, the barcode piece. Let me just grab the paper and I don't see it. All right, so let us cut it in half. Pray on it a little. <laughs> and sweet. And here you can do this. I think somebody was suggesting that in the comments is you can take off the part that did weed um, and that will be easier, I think, like this. And that way, when you're pulling up that piece, you'll have less for it to kind of stick on. But I really do think adding the more is what is causing this to um, be easier to weed. But it seems to get stuck on that S and the M here. Okay. Yeah, it's working, guys. It's working. Let's cut this off. And now we can go and remove this part here. Sweet summer time. We need the I to have the dot above it. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there, guys. Shouldn't say guys, people, friends. You know, some people will like create with using their own handwriting and use their like pencil, Apple Pencil, and this program called Procreate to do this sort of thing. But my feeling is like if somebody's already done it and it's, you know, it's not infringing on any uh, copyrights, then why not just figure out how to use the, the file um, in that's in already in Design Space. So we did it. Yay. Let's take our piece of... Um, reusable transfer tape and this time I'm gonna really really burnish well because it's a very loopy 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 thing okay and let's take this up there we go There's a little tiny piece coming up but that's okay that's why we do it sort of slow Perseverance. So I don't know. What do you think? Here? I think here is fine. And 
And don't push it all the way down, okay? Because you might have a hard time pulling it up off of the paper. But this seems to work really well, and it's a great way to incorporate all that vinyl that you have with your cards. And there it is. Whoop, boop, boop. Hi, Judite. Yeah, so there's the sweet summertime pop-up card. And then we have this one that I forgot to cut for you, but I'm going to give you the file anyway. And then our third one, which is this pineapple drink or the little fruity drink, sweet summertime. So I will... Um, um, I will be uh, giving you this file. So if you're watching this live, come back and look at the description to pull up this file. And if you're watching it on Facebook, I'm sorry, on YouTube, go to the description. Um, and you might have to use a little down arrow to look at the um, at the, at the description. Okay. But then there will be my free, um, design space file for all three of these. Okay. Including with this cutout. So that's it, everybody. Um, wondering since we're still running this little test on, um, on Facebook and notifications, um, if, if you guys have liked having that event thing, it, does that help you? Does it, do you get notifications? Um, I am still working on the butterflies. Yep, they're all <laughs> over here. Um, all over here. I'm still working. I am just um, still... I've got a few more to weed, but the weeding is the longest part, it was definitely not the cutting. So I have still a few more to weed. And then when I get, like, I think when I get like six of each color, then I'll start making the wreath, but I haven't got six of each color. I think I need to make more red and orange. So, um, so yeah, I'll be working on that. Um, and I actually also got a flag, a pride flag because ours got, um, ours kind of got ragged from being outdoors. And, uh, so I want to show you how to put iron on, on nylon, which is a flag. It is a pride flag. Um, I know I made somebody angry yesterday because I made pride stickers, which is bizarre, but, um, but I understand that some people don't like the whole pride thing but you know that that's the thing you don't have to do every single project that I do but I want to encourage diversity in our craft group and and so that's why I do things like that I I do St. Patrick's Day I do um you know Christmas and other holidays so that's just you know that's just who I am I'm very interested in having an inclusive environment in which to craft so I hope that doesn't make people angry but that's just kind of who I am all right everyone thanks so much for coming by today and we will see you again tomorrow remember tomorrow's 3d Friday and we are going to be doing some Lori Whitlock cards called shadow box shadow box box cards they look like this and they fold um and so you can put into an envelope and there's actually some really fun uh images i think i have a unicorn one um and a couple of summer ones that i'm going to show okay yeah, I know. Can't make everybody happy. So what are you going to do? But, you know, I mean, I, my thing is I'm striving to make you, the watchers that come every day on a regular basis, trying to make you happy by doing the things that you want to do. And, and then also, you know, putting things in that maybe you hadn't thought about and, and uh, giving you some ideas that way. That's all um all right so thank you to everyone i hope you have a wonderful day we'll see you again tomorrow take care bye